Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Pots and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It's Sunday morning, it's about nine o'clock and I'll tell you what, we've got a much better day than yesterday. Yesterday it was a little bit dismal, it felt more like October, November time, but today the sun is out, the sky is clear, but it is rather nippy down here, so it feels a little bit more wintry, which is nice. So yesterday was my December 2023 plot tour. I can't believe where the year has gone. It seems to just get quicker and quicker the older you get. But yesterday Today, when we were doing the plot tour I did manage to make a little bit of a to-do list of some bits and pieces that we needed to get done so we've got the poly house we've got the bench in there that I made probably two three months ago and I want to give that a lick of paint because what's happening is is when I'm watering all the seedlings and all the plants in there it's sort of laying on top of the wood and it won't be long before that starts to rot out so we want to protect it a little bit and we'll give it one coat now and we'll give it another coat a little bit later on not only that but we've got fruit bushes galore we've got the red white and pink currants we've got gooseberries uh, the blueberries and also the raspberries so in the fruit cage all of that needs a really good prune so we'll get in there later today now I did go into a little bit more detail how to prune your fruit bushes and and your fruit trees a few videos back so if you want that detail do pop back and have a look at some of those videos we've also got the two compost heaps I want to give those a turn and see if we can get any compost from the bottom of those so that we can mulch those on some of the beds just to give them some extra nutrients nutrients for come springtime and then as always I'm pretty sure there'll be some other little bits and bobs along the way but as always I'm going to go and make myself a quick cup of coffee and then we're going to get in that poly house warm up a little bit and start painting that bench up I've gone for a lovely yellow but I'll show you that in just a sec so come on guys let's go warm up and then we can get cracking before we get started um, in our office we have a secret Santa and um, one of my team members brought me a nice little cup to have down the allotment so if you've got any kids around i'd probably say don't look at the screen just for about 10 seconds just so i can show you what it says <laughs> i think i must talk about it an awful lot at work but um yeah i know i love it down here but yeah cheers guys so just in here this is the bench that i made probably about two three months ago it's on hinges so it does fold down in the summer months so that i can grow my tomatoes my cucumbers and all my really sun and heat loving plants in here what i'll do is i'll remove all of the seedlings and all the cuttings off the bench and then i'll just give you a little rundown as to how this actually works <laughs> So we've got these two legs at either end and these are placed onto the shelf with some hinges and some screws and we just need to fold these up and then once they're folded up up against the shelf we can then lower the shelf itself so it becomes a little bit more flush with the poly house wall. As you can see once that's folded away I've got a lot more space in here so I can start putting the supports in here in the summer time and I'll still be able to grow all of my usual such as the tomatoes and the cucumbers and there'll still be plenty of other space. And then come autumn winter time all i need to do is just pop it straight back out and we can start using it as a shelf again if you want to know how i built this poly house or also this foldable shelf i did do a couple of videos so i will link it down in the description below if you just want a little bit more detail about how you go about building these sort of structures so this is the paint color that i've gone for i've gone for almeria now the paintwork in here is gray already and i think yellow and gray works quite nicely and i always wanted a bit of color down here so let's start with a nice bright yellow
So I don't think I should give up my day job and become a painter and decorator, dear Lord. I mean, that took about an hour and a half to do the first coat. So I don't think we're going to get round to doing the second coat today. So we might do that next weekend. But let's just say I don't think anyone will be inviting me round to decorate their living room any day soon. If you remember yesterday, I was talking about how I need to start making room for my hellebores. And I've had a little closer look and I can already see all the new growth starting to form. So all of this down here, these are the new shoots and these are going to form beautiful new flowers for us. So give it another month or so and these really should start to bloom. I think I've got three or four plants in here, but none of them have started to shoot like this little guy down here. This is one of the other more established plants, but I think this must flower a little bit later because as you can see, these buds aren't quite yet opening like the other one. But again, it shouldn't be too long. Give it another month or six weeks and we should have some beautiful flowers. Right, okay, so we're going to have a go at dealing with this absolute sprawling mess down here. It's meant to be a gooseberry, but as you can see, it's starting to grow all the way towards the left, all out onto that path. So we want to cut that all back because the ideal shape for any fruit bush is a lovely goblet shape. As you can see, this is definitely far from a goblet, so we're going to give this a real good hack back. Because I haven't stayed on top of this, this isn't going to be the best example as to how to prune your fruit bushes. So I will just give this a real good cut and then we'll go in the fruit cage and I'll give you a little bit more detail. But do go careful when pruning your blackberries because they are very spiky. I'd say they're even worse than a blackberry, so do go careful. If you've got some special gloves, I would use them. If you have recently taken on a new plot and you've got a really old fruit bush like this and it's all over the place, my one tip is just to go in and try and remove the really old branches from the centre and don't worry if you end up taking a good 50% off. These, these bushes are huge and they've been there for a while so they have a good old root system and they should bounce back. got all of this material we can start using some of this and take some hardwood cutting so I've got this little bit as an example here so the branch running at the bottom you can see this is a much darker wood compared to these shoots that are coming off here now this is going to be last year's growth so it's only a year old at the most but this is going to be a couple of years old so we want to be taking these shoots from the main branch here so darker the wood the older the wood is going to be so you want this so once you've found your last year's growth all you need to do is just make little cuts and take them straight off now you want these to be around 8 to 12 inches long because we are going to take a little bit off the top as well before we pop them into some compost so we've got some multi-purpose compost here we've got the cuttings themselves and then we've also got some rooting powder just to help them along hardwood cuttings you take in the winter time and they can rot out so i'm not going to dip them in water beforehand because where i have made that cut it should still be a little bit green and some of that rooting powder should stick if you start dipping them into too much water you have got a higher chance of them rotting out now when you take your actual cuttings you want to make sure that you're taking the cut in the right place. So this is an example that I've got here. So the bottom cut you want to be making just below one of these leaf nodes which you can see here. Because this is an absolute powerhouse and you'll find that all the energy will go into making your roots. And you'll find all these little buds all the way up. And then you want to be making a cut at the top of the stem as well but this time rather than below a leaf node you want to be going just above it like i've done here again this is another powerhouse so you'll find that this bud will probably be the first to burst if it does take root so we're just going to dip this in a bit of rooting powder and then straight into the compost and then into the poly house and give it a couple of months hopefully in spring next year you'll start to see these buds start to open
I'm hoping you can see those beautiful lime green bunny ears sticking up just above the soil there. They almost look like little tulips, but I believe these are snowdrops. So it's so exciting this time of year when you start seeing all the new growth that's going to give you lots of colour and just so much interest in the new year. Oh, and we've even got a few little more coming up here. I can't remember how pretty these are. You have to sort of turn them over and see the inside. You sometimes get pure whites, but some with some lime green as well. Now I'm hoping you can see the gooseberry bush in here. This is the centre just here. I know that the soil and the bark chip don't help. It all looks the same, but this is the centre and it's all starting to sprawl out. And as you can see, we've got loads of air in here. So it's got that perfect sort of goblet shape that we're after. Now, first of all, we want to be looking for all the three Ds. So that's dead, diseased and dying wood. But this is about three, four years old, this plant. It's been in here probably two years now. So there isn't a huge amount of dead or dying or diseased wood, but there is crossing branches. Now, you don't want your branches to be crossing each other and to be rubbing up against each other because this could open a wound on your plant. And if you've got a little wound, that could allow disease or infection to get in there. So it's a good idea just to remove any rubbing branches and I'd always cut the older stem off rather than the newer. Now it is important where we make our cuts, like before when we were doing our cuttings, you want to be cutting just above a leaf node and that will allow the plant to regrow from that shoot next year. So here's a little example of where you want to be making your cut. So this branch is actually moving away from the centre, which is exactly what we want. And as you can see, we've got all of these buds down here. Now we don't really want to make the main bud one of these ones on the bottom because it's going to mean that the plant's going to start growing towards the ground. So really you want to be using one of these buds at the top. So it's going to mean that the shoot's going to go upwards and away from the plant. So that bud there looks like quite a nice bud. So we're just going to Stip it off just above it. There we go. And what that will mean is that this plant will now start to grow outwards away from the plant and make it a little bit more bushier. So I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this, but gooseberry plants are a little bit like strawberries in that they can run and they can root into the ground. So if they're a little bit heavy with all of the berries that they get and they start to trail along the ground, you will find that they'll root on their own. So we're just going to try and prise this little guy up without stabbing ourselves too much. Oh, and then we'll just give him a little cut off and we'll see if we can pot him back up. As you can see, that plant has made these tiny little rootlets just under the soil. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down quite a little bit shorter and then we're going to try and plant this up because it's already got a nice little root system on it. So we've just got some multi-purpose compost and we're just going to stick it in to the soil, give those um, little rootlets a little bit of a cover up to make sure that they can get in all that nutrients and all of the water when we do give it a water in. And as you can see, I've chopped off quite a lot off the top because it will lose a lot of water and you, it, even more chance of it rotting away or dying. So do keep them quite short, but yeah, we'll just give this a little water and pop it with the other cuttings that we've got in the poly house. Now these haven't got to go into a poly house at all, just keep them a little bit sheltered, so maybe along the house somewhere, but these will be fine outside in the cold. It's not the warmth that they need, it's just a little bit of protection just until they get their roots going. There we go, we've given all of the fruit bushes in here a real good prune back now. The only things that I haven't touched are the raspberry canes, which I'll leave probably until January, February time. And then we've also got to worry about the grape, but I think I'm going to give that another couple of weeks until I'm 100% sure about what I'm doing. Well, that is all we've got time for today folks i feel like we spent quite a lot of time this morning painting that shelf in the poly house i don't think i'm going to be a painter and decorator anytime soon it takes ages and it's a real boring job for me so yeah not a fan but we do need to get another coat 
on that at some point so over the next couple of weeks as long as it's not too cold down here I will get another lick of paint on that shelf and that's just going to add to the colour but the main benefit is so that it starts protecting that wood from the water when I start watering those seedlings. Another job that I keep having on the to-do list is to turn those compost heaps so I must do that over the next couple of weeks. Don't feel like you've got to be rushed we've got until sort of January February time but I just want to get as much of that fresh compost at the bottom and get them on the beds as soon as possible ready for spring. We've given all of the fruit bushes a real good cut back now I think all we've got left is the grape and the raspberries and also a couple of more fruit bushes up this end of the garden that aren't in the fruit cage but that fruit cage is near enough complete. I just need to mulch those paths in there and give all of them a real good feed with some chicken manure pellets just to see them through until the springtime. Now it's almost the big day guys, it's almost Christmas, but I am going to be down here before Christmas day because I do need to harvest some of the vegetables that we'll be cooking up for our Christmas dinner. I hope that you're all sorted, ready for Christmas, and if you're not a believer, I just hope that you can take some time to relax and chill out and maybe focus on you or the garden for a few days. December is different for people all around the world. For here in the UK, it sort of means Christmas, it means cold, there's not much you can do in the garden, but if you're in Australia, it's totally different. You're in the middle of your summer right now. So yeah, just enjoy December to the best that you can. If you really wanna give me a present, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and all of that good stuff. So yes, I will see you guys before Christmas, but in the meantime, have a lovely week ahead of you, and I'll see you all very soon. So take care, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.